Hi everyone, uh, today we'll be going over a couple ways that we can take something that is otherwise tileable and make it look really unique. So like uh, we could take things that have sort of uh, its own stacked UV channels, maybe they're using a tileable texture um, or just no texture in general and we're going to be able to uh, in engine going through a process to get it looking rather unique. Um, so like we're going to be going through uh, using say the modeling tools just to make a little basic prop and then we're going to go into to Maya we're going to uh, make a second UV channel and then substance painter then back into Unreal and we're going to sort of go through making a very basic um, you know masking material so that way we can get a lot of variation for an otherwise bland object. Uh, so with that being said, let's uh, actually just get right into it. Okay, we are in engine now. So what we have in front of us is uh, just a simple asset that I, I made using uh, just a few, you know, few pieces. Uh, these, these five boards in order to sort of create this whole asset here. Um, so what we have here is just a neutral scene that I use uh, just for modeling and sort of seeing what objects look like. However, you can see that, well, these are just individual boards. There is uh, a lot of variation kind of going on the surfaces here uh, based off of, you know, what we see. Um, but each one of these is using a special mask. Uh, let me actually get it here. Uh, special mask inside of it, like uh, like I mentioned before, that allows it to get this unique variation. Otherwise, it would more or less be looking looking like this, just a pure uh, board color right here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly build a wall using the modeling tools, uh, using these planks, and then we're going to go through the process. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the modeling tools and I'm going to create uh, a duplicate of this object. So uh, in order to do that, there under the create options, there's this option for duplicating a mesh. So I'm just going to do that. And we can see that it is now duplicated from our two by eight to uh, this random tag below it. So that's an indicator that this is in fact uh, duplicated. So I'm just gonna move it off to the side. And what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna to go to the box here and I'm just gonna make a, um, a 300 by 300 and a 20 wall, just like that. Just so I have something to kind of see what uh, our wall is gonna look like, our ultimate size here. And what I'm going to do with this duplicate is I'm actually going to use the pattern tool. And using this pattern, uh, you can see that it, it's doing some wonky stuff here because it's laying it out along the x-axis when in fact we want it on the y right now. Of course, we can turn it, but that doesn't matter um, you know, too much. I am going to turn it just because I want it to be this way. But we are going to want it to be on the x-axis here, sorry, the z-axis, and we're going to want to just get our start and end rotations to be 90 and 90, just so it's flat like this. Uh, but you can see that it's in the center of our, uh, our pattern. So we're just gonna raise it up and uh, from I pressed the wrong button, from um, 0 to 200, or 150, sorry, so it's in the center. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just lower the extent here a bit until it's more or less, more or less the size of the wall. Okay, let's just kind of see what it looks like. It looks like it could use two boards. Let's go 13 and just raise this up a bit. There, I think that's pretty good. I'm just gonna hit accept. You'll notice that it made a 
actor here, uh, which is not what we want. We actually want it to be a, a mesh. So I'm actually just going to hit the merge tool here in order to turn it into a static mesh. And there we go. So uh, obviously this is, um, there's a lot more we could have done with the pattern tool, but I feel like that would end up extending the video a lot longer. Um, but for this, all we uh, to add some variation to this, we can actually go ahead and go into the poly edit and we can start kind of moving some of these things around. Since they are still individual ob like um, IDs, they don't have any groups, um, it allows us to move the entire board quite easy. And of course we can go in if we wanted to um, and mess with the UVs. And we will actually, we'll do a little bit to this. So uh, with the board sort of moved around a bit, let's actually go into the UV tools. And we can do that by going to the actor and we can go to the UV edit. And in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I select uh, by island. And what I, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick a couple right in here. And I'm going to, with them selected, I'm going to go to the transform tools and I can either do a full on rotation, you know, to them. So they're the other way around. And I can also lower them a bit and of course select further ones, you know, and then do the same thing. We'll just go up. And now there's only a couple boards that are, are looking more or less uh, the same. So let's just do a bit of another rotation and we'll just move it off to the side and down. So there's one more. And I think that's okay. I think this one just needs to be flipped like that. And I think, um, I think we're good. Oh, and I accidentally backed out of that. So we'll do that. And now it's looking pretty unique from both sides uh, without leaving, you know, the editor for this one. But of course, the, the main issue is, is that you know, everything's tiling. And if we were to, you know, add some dirt variation to it as it is, it would still, you know, show up in a tiling method across the whole thing. So we actually need to take this out of engine now. So let's do that. So I'm going to just go hit the search button for this one. And I can see that it's this specific object. And I'm just going to do an export on it to get it outside of engine. And just for this, I'm going to just save it to my desktop. I don't recommend doing this, but for the demo sake, I'll, I'll just do it. Commit mortal sins everywhere. Uh, so I'm just going to export it and I'm going to jump into Maya. So you can see I, I have sort of a other option here you know, uh, that's a little bit more filled out, but we'll worry about this another time. We're just doing a very basic wall. Um, and we're just going to add in the SM wall demo here. Nothing selected. Ah, yeah, it's because I hit the other option. So I'm gonna import it. And you can see that it has its collision here. I'll just put it under uh, underneath in a bit. But what I want to do is I want to head over to the UV editing tools. And inside of here, you can see we, we have our uh, UVs, but I don't want to touch these, right? Uh, because for whatever reason, you know, I, I want them to, I still want to be able to use the tileable material that was on it. So I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to actually go into the UV option up here and I'm going to go to UV set. And inside, if I select the combined mesh here, you'll see that it has the light map UV. Well, I'm just going to copy it and I'm going to rename it channel one. 
because that's what this one's going to be. And inside of it, I'm just going to go and select all the UV shells and I'm just going to hit layout because since these are going to be masks, it's okay. Um, you don't need to have them be proper texel density or anything like that. Uh, so it's perfectly fine. But we can check to see if our light map UV, which is our channel one, let's call that, sorry, channel zero. Let me rename it so it's a little bit clear. Is that we now have a second UV channel uh, that has our unique fully you know, spread out islands. And all we have to do from here uh, to bring it into substance is that we're just going to duplicate it. And in this duplicate, we're going to go to the UV sets and we're just going to remove all the UV islands from it. So what should end up looking like is that we have an empty channel zero and a UV channel one that has all our UV maps in it. So that's good. This is prepped now for uh, going into uh, substance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it out as demo texture. And coming into uh, substance, you'll notice that I had uh, a wall here previously about uh, which is showing sort of what we're going to be doing. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to open up a new one and I'm going to bring in our SM demo texture. And I'm just going to keep it the regular settings and just my template at Unreal 4. This one doesn't completely matter. It's just the one I chose. Uh, you can have it whatever you want. It's just that's, uh, that's what I got. And I'm just going to discard it because that was the test. But in here you see I have my four uh, sorry, my boards. And I'm going to just go into the texture settings and I'm going to uh, create sort of um, some data for these masks, these smart masks, to be able to, you know, well, you know, use them to create the masks later. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to bake mesh maps and inside of it, it's okay to keep it kind of low. Uh, low output since uh, it won't have any detail too much on these but I am going to select use low poly as high poly and in here I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to just bake the textures down and it's going to go through the process of of making them and it will allow us to apply these these masks Right, uh, which rely on those baked maps. But first and foremost, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create four uh, fill layers. I'm gonna mute the first three. And this bottom one, I'm gonna turn black. And the reason why is because I, I want uh, a base uh, blackness to it so that there's no information except for where I want it. And this first one, I'm gonna turn red like pure red and let's see it. So obviously, like I said, is that we're gonna to have to apply a mask to this in order for it to look good. And I'm just gonna bring in the occlusion mask on here or try a couple. So you can see that what this did is that based off of um, the generated mask is that it allows us to control not only the balance of it, but also the global contrast uh, how much ambient occlusion it's using, as well as uh, how much of the curvature. But in this case, it might not be the one I want. I might want to have something that's a little bit more, um, more dirty, you know, maybe like for an actual global dirt, you know, sort of like this. I think that might be a bit except, uh, excessive. So maybe just dust occlusion originally will be okay. So with that, uh, I might actually just move this over to the top just so it doesn't get overwritten by the green and blue channels. But I'm just gonna repeat the process uh, for blue. And I'm gonna make this one our ground dirt. 
So this one will be just a top down uh, value right here. And this will be more or less uh, a dirt texture. And now I'm gonna do the same with uh, green. Like that. And from here, let's uh, let's see what we can do. Let's see if dirt crusty, you know, I, I think that one will be okay. Like we can uh, use it like as some mold or, you know, something on top of it, maybe for wetness, but it's pretty good. Let's use that. So we're pretty much done here. All we really have to do now is just uh, export the texture. So let's go to the file and let's go export textures. And under our global settings with this uh, settings here with the 1001, just cause that's how it was named, is I'm just going to, or the UV channel or UV island, I should say. Uh, if I'm wrong on that, sorry, texturing artists. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to just save the color information and I'm going to place it in a folder that makes sense. So in this case, I have a teaching folder and I'm gonna go into my textures and masks and I'm just going to export it there. And you see it's wall demo 001 and it was successful. Now, before we go back into Unreal, I have to bring this back in. So to do that, because this is the, the UCX is the collision, I'm just going to drag it underneath my combined here. And let's just rename my combined to the SM while uh, YouTube demo. Uh, yup tube, yup tube. Okay, so uh, with that, I'm just going to, with it selected, export selection. And I'm going to just save over the SM wall demo. Or no, <laughs> uh, let's actually stick to what we named it in um, in uh, Maya. So let's go YouTube demo. So what was the point in naming it that? So uh, with that, uh, I'm just going to bring it into um, a top level here and I'll just make a new folder for this stuff called demo and inside of it I'm going to import my uh, my stuff so let's go to desktop the YouTube demo yep let's bring it in okay uh, let's delete that because I forgot to turn that off and I'm not worrying too much about the pivot for this one because uh, it's more just a demo. But since it's there, that's good. And I'm going to now import that texture. One sec. The wall demo here. And once it's in, uh, just because of how I have it set up, I'm going to have to turn on virtual texture. And I also need to make sure that the compression settings is mask. Uh, so that way it doesn't get affected. And now what I need to do is I need to create sort of a material for this. So I'm just going to open up my other one right here, this MI planks. Uh, this one's a bit more advanced, but uh, like, I mean, it doesn't look like much, but it's because I have all these texture adjustments. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna copy a couple of these things into a new material. And I'm going to go from here. So this is using material attributes. So like in order to kind of get this stuff, I just need to actually go uh, pull out and I will do um, a uh, get material attributes just so I can only grab certain aspects of this. 
So let's say, let's grab the base color and roughness. Because that's all we really need. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a texture parameter with our SM demo wall. And I'm going to just put it in as a virtual mask. And from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, like, in case I have things that don't have a, a second UV channel, it'd be a good idea to have a static switch, a switch parameter to specify which channel to use. So in this case, I'll be, I'll just do switch and then channel OO masking. And in here, I'm just going to have it as UV coordinate one and zero. So I'll have zero as false, but I'll have channel 01 as uh, the, the false section, because that's the one we want to use by default. And I'm going to plug that into the UVs. Now from here, what we can do is that uh, we can now separate each of these channels into individual things. So I'm going to start with the red channel. So I'll start with doing, you know, a R channel uh, strength or R channel mask strength. A, and then also a R channel contrast. That's not what I wanted. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a power node because the power nodes, uh, they don't, they do a much better job at sort of um, adding the contrast than the actual contrast node. Uh, that one sort of just crunches it. Whereas this one gives it a nice, it sharpens the fall off, which is really nice. So. I'm just going to do this. And as an example, we'll, we'll do that. But I have my wood as my base. But what I'm going to do is just for the sake of it is let's actually add, um, I guess, moss to the top. So let's see. Mega scans, surfaces. Let's go and filter by texture. Let's add heavy mud, not really. Let's do Nordic moss. Let's grab that. So let's bring that in. So I'll use this as the base for, for it. And maybe we can even do a full material, but let's just keep it simple for the time being with that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to LARP using the red channel, I'll use this one to lerp between this color as, you know, uh, the A, sorry, the B channel, and then I'll use our base, our base as the wood. So if I press start, now you'll see that, oh, <laughs> I put the RGB in, is that now we're getting some you know, nice moss in the cracks here. And we'll see that on our actual texture in just a sec, or actual asset in just a second. Now, aside from that, we also kind of want to get a, you know, a roughness for this. So why don't we, why don't we do that? Now I would typically do it differently. Like I'll show you how I actually have this set up, but this is how I would kind of go I, about it, at least for the, this demo. But I'm going to just add, oh, I don't have a, uh, a roughness. So in that case, I'll just probably grab the red channel and see about that. I think that's okay. And then I'll do a duplicate of this in a bit. So We'll do that. And then now there's some roughness kind of going on in those cracks as well. 
And we're not going to care about the normal too much with this one. But what I would do after this now is I'm going to make a copy of this because now our moss is, is correct. So uh, I think just for the sake of uh, things being a little bit easier, um, we'll just continue on without adding all that stuff back together. But what I am going to do with these R channel masks just for the sake of time is I'm going to open up uh, the notepad and I'm going to paste everything in. Now it's like, oh, well, how is this going to be useful? Well, we can just go and hit replace. And since we're looking for R channel mask, we can switch it out with, you know, G channel mask if that's right. Yeah, so once it's like that, we can just hit replace all, copy, paste, and boom. We have our green channel done. And let's also do that with our uh, V channel. And like that, we have our channel masks and all their controls ready to go. But in here, let's go ahead and in this, this blue, let's go ahead for the green one, sorry. Or which one was it? I think it was, yeah, the, the main one that we actually want for like say, uh, wetness will be the, the blue channel, if I got that right. No, the green channel. We'll use the green, sorry. Um, but in this case, it's like, say we can do, um, we can darken it a bit. Let's go to say, uh, 0.18 for how dark we want the overlay to be. And then we'll do a blend overlay. And we'll just blend these two colors together. And then we'll do a lerp between these. Lerp. And we'll put in our green channel to it. And let's see what that looks like. So it just darkens it a bit right here. We can even see it go a little bit darker. Let's go 0.1. Yeah, like just for our wetness. And then from here, what I'll do is I'll just add a uh, sort of a roughness control. So we can have our blended, you know, um, moss roughness in here. And then we're going to have a, you know, wetness um, roughness. I'll just keep this at 0 0.03. And I'm just gonna put the green channel mask into it, like that. And let's see this. That's looking good, okay. And now we're going to add some, sort of like some moss or some mold onto it. So with that, let's actually grab it our um, color, let's just make it moss color, or sorry, mold, dirt, whatever you want. I'll do dirt. And like with dirt, we'll go to brown ish, brown, brown ish. And we'll do another, like we'll just make this one replace uh, the top. So we'll go like that. And we'll do our channel, sorry, the B channel here, just like this. Then we're going to also do another roughness lerp. So we can do uh, like mold roughness. Let's set that to like say point, point 0.5. And in here, we'll also grab the, uh, the, the B channel and from here, let's um, let's just do a set material attributes. 
and then we'll do base color and roughness like that. So we'll plug it back in and then go all the way back to our uh, get material attributes and we'll just add a reroute node to go over top. And do it like so. Make this one a material attribute. And now we have our mud and everything on it. So let's let's go back to the L modeling and we're just going to place the new material on. And you can see that we went from this one material, or sorry, this one look, you know, on the wood all the way to having like a, a fully changed and uh, customized version of this that we can now go in and even, you know, do a whole bunch of controls. So like we have some roughness controls on that. We can even change the strength so that way you know, it's um, having more control. But um, let's uh, let's go into sort of the other material that I have going, just so that there's a little bit extra controls. Because what makes uh, makes this material good is that I have um, more additional control to it using material parameter collections. So a material parameter collection allows you to uh, basically have uh, scalar and vector parameters that are global. And this allows us to basically control multiple materials at once. So say if we wanted wind controls over um, multiple you know, foliage materials and have them all line up, so it's not like we have to go into the flowers, the grass, the bushes, the trees. We can actually all drive it through a material parameter collection. So in this case, uh, let's take a look at, you know, this mold here, is that I can actually control it on the entire thing, right? So like I can press all this to zero and we can get rid of pretty much every little, oops, that's the contrast, one sec, strength here, is that we can actually get this whole object looking back to clean very easily. Uh, however, with the mask controls is that we can actually control it on every single, you know, material. So how I'm doing this is that I don't only have it on uh, a, like, across, like, all the objects, but I also have it so that way uh, I can actually go into the material itself and control it on a per object or even a per material basis. So let's actually see how that looks. So right now, if I go into architecture windmill, and I'll just open up this, this one, is that I currently have it set up so that way I have my texture adjustments, but then I have, you know, the R channel inside of a material. And we could probably do that as well within uh, the green and blue channels. But if I open this up, I currently have it so that this RGB mask is being controlled by both the global material parameter collection and then also on the asset itself or the material itself. So that way I can do it global and then I can come in and do unique unique tweaks. Now let's actually look at um, look at it from the other perspective here. So say I have I have this wall here and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to just duplicate the wall. And I'm also going to just keep that same material here. But what I am going to do is that inside of it, I'm just going to turn on the strength for each of these uh, sets here. 
is that we can also create a, a dynamic material instance on the mesh inside of our level. So on our, on our left, or sorry, on the right, we have material only tweaks. And then on this one, I'm gonna create a dynamic material. And on this, you can see that everything that we told it to expose is here. And now just a little caveat about this, only the stuff that it has a checkbox will show up. Otherwise it won't be here. But with this, I can actually go ahead and I can control the masks on this specific object by itself. So I can go and I can make the water a little bit more apparent. I can also make this channel non-existent almost. And you can see that I was able to get even more difference between the two. So now with this one, if I wanted it side by side, I can, right? Uh, looking different, that is. And of course I can revert it and have it like that as well. And of course, like, you know, in terms of modularity, some of this stuff, we might want to actually do that just to avoid that um, you know, that repeating. So we could use multiple masks or we could do it this way, but this is just one example. But uh, that is pretty much it. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and call it right here. Uh, thank you guys for, you know, coming and watching this video again. I'll hopefully be able to upload uh, some more in a bit um, but yeah I hope that was useful if you feel like something could be changed or you still have any questions uh, please make a comment and I'll, I'll see uh, see about answering it or even updating the video um, and of course please like share and subscribe I'm trying to grow the channel and I'm hoping that uh, I'll be able to you know at least help you guys out with learning a bit more but until next time, take care.